How's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Respect and Pray Show with your host, Miguel Mike Medina, Triple M. In this episode, um, I don't have a long time knowing this person. As a matter of fact, I recently met him this year, and it's the first time that I met someone that is very into social media marketing, social media coordinating. And I just feel that with his resume, with everything that he's doing, I had to bring him on on this show. So take a look at this interview, get to know more about him, and I hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to present to you, Mr. Rafael Perez. Rafael, thank you for joining me today. And thank you for inviting me. Appreciate it. No problem, man. So I got to get started from the top. What made you get into the marketing industry? Yeah, so, you know, I was just very much growing up interested in the idea of very much just, you know, what, how do we build a connection between people in terms of like a product they want and just, you know, a company that wants to sell that product to that target market. And, you know, from there, I've just been learning a lot about marketing on the side while I've been working at my current job and just been, you know, developing my skill set, hoping to get a good opportunity coming. All right. So I saw that you took sports sales and marketing course at Sports Management Worldwide, mm -hmm. where we met on the Sunday weekly chat. Yeah. How was that class like? What did you learn from that? Yeah. So it was weekly classes in which we learned about uh, basically mostly the sales side, to be honest, in terms of uh, what was happening in the stadium, but also just seeing like uh, what was going on in terms of, you know, the various sponsorships and, uh, you know, connections that brands were trying to make with fans, you know, through those connections in the stadium and through uh, commercials within, you know, uh, like sports events. So, uh, you know, we interacted with our mentor slash teacher uh, Jim Van Dam from the Colts and he just went us through that he gave us various assignments uh and we read various books uh one of them was uh the 800 pounds grill of sales which I think was pretty good by uh Bill Gorton I believe it was it's a pretty good book in which he wants some you know understanding of like how sales like works and like what key things like for example like not to you know you have a muscle in terms of like your power as a hand of pound drill, but you don't want to like flex it every time because it kind of gets weak when you do that. But being, but being able to like, you know, flex it when it needs to be flexed shows like how much more powerful it is, for example. And so overall, the class was pretty good in terms of like learning like what is needed to understand like marketing of like brands because we had like a product at the end of the semester where we just went to one of the games and we just looked around and saw like what was there in terms of like sponsorship and like how teams was like trying to sell and make money from, you know, people attending the games, would that be like uh, buying food or, you know, seeing like uh, an installation, like for example, when I went to a Mets game, like Verizon was doing a little thing in which they gave you like a gift card if you signed up for emails. And, you know, that was very, a good way to get people to think about Verizon at a sports event. So like all of that came together into pretty interesting class and experience for me. Nice. I'm glad to hear that. Um, mm -hmm. I read a few of the guidelines for that class. So I'm glad that you got a certificate for that. So mm -hmm. congratulations. Thank you. Any obstacles you got to overcome in your field so far? Uh, I think the biggest thing for me at least is uh, being able to like, go out and show off that experience because you know it's very easy to say oh I have all these certifications and uh, you know I have like the learning like the foundation but being able to show that like I can execute those that foundation is probably a big key of you know getting into the industry and another big thing I would say in conjunction with that is getting those connections in order to really be able to bring that over to make you know get over there and such so for me it's those two things like making sure you know I start working on stuff in order to be able to show to people that I can like hack in the industry but also 
very much just connecting with the right people so that when that opportunity comes, uh, I'm able to get to it. You know, they say that uh, being lucky is uh, having the, you know, being prepared and then being presented with the opportunity. Uh, so that's like a big thing for me at least. Favorite breakfast meal? Uh, for me, I'd have to say bacon. Favorite late night snack? Um, I would have to say these Frito ways that I like. Uh, the Fritos in terms of like the barbecue ones, like the the twirls and stuff like that. Those are pretty good. Your top three favorite travel destinations? Travel destinations. I would say Atlantic City is probably high up there um, in New Jersey. Um, I would say uh, Ocean City, Maryland has been pretty good. Uh, very nice scenic place in terms of like the beaches and everything going on there. Same for Atlantic City. And I think number three would probably be, I went on a trip with my friends to Vermont uh, a while back and just very nice open place and just a lot to see there for sure. So I was saying it was my top three. Favorite social media platform to market, LinkedIn or Twitter? Uh, I think it's honestly going to depend on your target market. I say if you're going for a more professional uh, group, I would have to say that it, LinkedIn is the easy answer. But I feel like, especially with the fans, if we're talking about sports, for example, uh, being able to interact with people on Twitter and being able to see like what they're doing and such and be able to say, well, this target market likes when we interact, uh, interact with them in this way. And then, you know, this is a post we can make that would really be doing well on social media organically. That would be, I say Twitter would be more beneficial in that regard. And I would say, like I said, LinkedIn's more professional angle. Respect or loyalty? Uh, I think a bit of a tough one. You know, when you talk about respect, that's something you very much have to earn, but also same for loyalty. Uh, I think respect is something held a lot more because when you talk about respect, we're talking about this is a person that you hold in high regard and that you want to you know, meet the expectations. Like when they say jump, how high, you ask how high, you know. And, to, and loyalty is good by all means, but if, you know, they're not bringing, you know, good vibes, they're not bringing the best out of you through that loyalty, and it's only going to lead you so much. I would say respect ultimately is where I would be at. Which sport do you, um, I wouldn't say like to market, um, to do more marketing, or um, I would say if, you were to get an offer, um, a very big opportunity to do sports uh -huh. marking yeah. in either sport, which would it be, baseball or basketball? Baseball or basketball. I think for me, baseball is an interesting one because, you know, the big thing that everyone talks about is like, you have two like potential like goats, greatest all time people in like Mike Trout and uh, Sean Ray Otani on the same team. And yet, somehow baseball was like dealing with a crisis of like not being able to like market that well. Uh, in comparison to basketball, it's really honed in to its target market of like people really into basketball and stuff like that. So for me, I feel like on one end, like basketball seems like not easy per se, but it seems like they know more what they're doing. But I think it would be interesting to tackle baseball, especially with a team you know, that could use it, it might be like the Marlins or you know, the Athletics, particularly the Athletics are you know, in a bad shape right now. But like, for me, you know, I'm a Yankees fan. Uh, they're a little corporate, but at the same time, yeah, oh yeah. But at the same time, you know, I think it would be an interesting opportunity to see, you know, maybe we could make it a little less corporate and make it more like fun. Because I know they're doing that with Judge already, but I feel like having more of that would be interesting. Describe the culture working for New Jersey Transit and field experience as a social media coordinator and mm -hmm. also as a sales and marketing coordinator. Yeah, so NJ Transit 
he is a government agency and I feel like within the group I'm in like the department I'm in it's we're getting stuff done and you know it gets hectic at times but we're able to like really enjoy ourselves while we're doing this work in order to make sure that like we nevertheless make sure like we're gonna get everything done that we can to make sure that every customer's experience is handled in the best way that we that we're able to in order to because it's never easy you know we have a lot of like issues in terms of like delays and shutdowns you know customers are going to get annoyed and we have to be able to say to them you know we understand you're annoyed and this is not the best situation but we're going to get you through this and you know we're just gonna try and make the experience the best as we can for you uh, field experience i've been working there for a little bit in terms of like esports in which they're doing a course of like esports event uh production management in which they're trying to help out various like schools and uh, uh cities and stuff like that get prepared for like holding esports events in order to get them to be able to spread more and hold better events uh, for esports as it expands over time. Uh, it's very interesting, more freelance type of position, which we just make sure that we're going to get the proper message out there that we want to like really help out uh, wherever we are in order to make sure that everything's like working together and that students who get the opportunity to use this course are able to very much uh, benefit from it, from like that and from the experiences they can get from it, from like, you know, the work events and being able to just, you know, have that experience on a resume is something that, you know, that's very beneficial for sure. Where can we follow you in your work? Uh, I would say LinkedIn is a big one. Uh, uh, Raphael Justin Perez, I believe is what the name is. That's mainly where I'm at. Like I'm trying to develop uh, Twitter, but um, yeah, I can wait that later at some point. Uh, I can't think of it off the top of my head, to be honest. But yeah, mainly LinkedIn, to be honest. Raphael, thank you so much for taking time to do this interview with me. This show is about giving people their respect, their flowers for the work that they're doing, mm -hmm. especially those who don't get that much notoriety. So, Rafael, I'm watching you. I salute you on everything that you're doing. And, man, just by listening to you, um, I'm learning more about social media uh, marketing mm -hmm. and coordinator. So it's not too many people that I know who, who are into that department when it comes to social media and yeah. marketing and stuff like that. So it's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to have you in this platform and mm -hmm. keep going, man. You're doing great. Thank you. I appreciate to uh, speak with you today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that does it for this episode of the Respect and Pray Show. Hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And as always, mutual respect, mutual love, and mutual admiration. Stay tuned for the next episode.